So back in the day when I was young, before uh, the invention of the Google and the internet and all of that kind of thing, when we wanted song words, right? When we wanted song words from a song, which was very important when we were uh, young men in school, that we knew all of the appropriate lyrics for various songs that had been released by the Pearl Jam and the Nirvana and whoever else. We had to sit down with a cassette tape, a pen, and a sheet of paper. Okay, so you're trying to you'd be listening to what. And this, this must have been absolutely awful for the generation before us, listening to Mick Jagger. How is no idea what he's saying? Uh, so, so you have to listen to the words, try and decipher them, and then write them down. And then you bring them into school, right? And then during class, then people will be copying out the words of songs because you couldn't just Google it and look it up on your phone. So it was a painstaking, um, so it took dedication, right? Back when men were men, and uh, and all right, and so. These kind of, then obviously we all had bad versions of songs and some people would listen to a song and really wouldn't have a clue what was in makeup, fill in gaps. We learned all sorts of strange things. But um, what was important was then you, you kind of, you'd actually learn these off, especially when I was playing guitar in school. Uh, you had to learn the songs off, you had to learn off the lyrics, like so you could, you could lead the session uh, when, during lunch break or whatever. And it's interesting how very often for really unimportant things. We try to commit things to memory. Another important thing when I was in primary school was that you'd have to learn off uh, when Liverpool last won the Premiership and when they had won it before that and before that. You had, you, know, you had to know how many titles each team had, so when the debate would start, you know, between the, at the time, uh, Newcastle, Liverpool fans, uh, you'd be able to argue your way out of it. You know what I mean? Very important things. But so you see, again, you sit down and learn these things. You'd commit them to memory because they were important. Something which is striking me recently is the importance of actually learning bits of scripture, right, and committing them to memory. These words that are life-giving words, that are words of life, uh, words of the Lord Himself, uh, either directly uh, from from the Gospels or words that He has inspired through the Holy Spirit. Either way, these are. Life-giving, powerful words. We say at the end of, of, of every reading, you know, we say, as we hear it every single day, the word of the Lord. And at the end of every single gospel, the gospel, the good news of the Lord. And how important it is to, to commit these things to memory because, uh, and I, I don't have the best of memories, but how, good, how, how important it is to try, right? To try, like if you have a good memory, to learn off scripture, not to be able to boast about it. That was kind of the reason that we learned off premiership facts in primary school, uh, but in order to, uh, to be able to draw from, from, from these words of life during your day, you know, something happens. Like we were just reading the, the uh, we were praying evening prayer yesterday, and uh, this one particular line just really, really struck me, you know. Uh, it was just, uh, uh, I had been talking to someone earlier today, earlier yesterday, and I thought this line really describes their situation and will be perfect for them to, not just to, to learn it like, but to live it, you know. It's Sam. Um, 31, 32, uh, you are my hiding place, O Lord. You save me from distress. You surround me with cries of deliverance. I just, I just love, like, it's such an awesome little expression there, right? You are my hiding place, O Lord. So, I mean, when we were young, we used to build fortresses and tree houses and all sorts of things. So the hiding place is still a manly thing, okay? Uh, but, uh, but, like, so in the noise of the world, the distraction of the world, the temptation of the world, right? Everything that's going on out there. You are my hiding place, Lord. You are where I go to be at peace, right? You save me from distress. You save me from distress. And then this, this kind of unusual line, you surround me with cries of deliverance. I'm not even sure what that looks like. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You're in your little tree house or in, in your kind of your cave in your safe place and the Lord is outside there roaring. If anybody comes near him, <laughs> you to deal with me. I, I don't really know what it looks like, but it, it's, it's the Lord. The Lord is, is your defense, right? If anybody is going to come to you, they have to come through him. And again, to have that kind of confidence. And then during the day, like to be drawing from, from the, the, the wealth and the power of that word. You are my hiding place, O oh Lord. You save me from distress. You surround me with cries of deliverance. St. Francis uh, had a particular, I guess, obedience, we might say, to, to scripture, as did, I suppose, in, 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 indirectly or directly, all missionaries had, like the, the divine 
commission, this commission given by God to go out and make disciples of all nations. Any missionary, either directly or indirectly, is answering that divine call. So this, 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 this command of, of Jesus to go out there and share our faith, either, as I say, directly or indirectly, any, anybody who does mission, anyone who tries to pass on the faith is doing, is doing that, is allowing that, 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 that word to bear fruit in their lives. St. Francis, in a particular way, his youth of, uh, of vanity and uh, superficiality and arrogance, uh, when all of that collapsed, when you read into the detail like, of what it was like, there, there, there were, it was a time uh, in Italy in the 13th century when there was an awful lot of rivalry between rival kingdoms. Uh, obviously, any place divided by mountains, people get a bit insular in their mentality because you can't travel easily. So rival kingdoms uh, fighting each other and, and St. Francis, Francis uh, wanted to have the nicest armor, right, with gold plating and, you know, pictures of dinosaurs and dragons and whatever it was on it, you know what I mean? And so riding into battle, like, at all this kind of shine. I mean, did he know how to wield a sword? We don't know. By the way, he got captured and came back in shame way after the battle, you know what I mean? Everyone had already gone home after the battle. He was still in prison over there in the Perugia. Uh, so he came back in shame. Like, it was just, it was, it was a, a life of vanity and, and self-seeking, really. Uh, when... Then he hears the, the Lord's call, you know, rebuild my church. He, he sees this as, as a, a, a call to a radical change, not just, he understands it initially, I suppose, to, to rebuild the physical building. Uh, and in order to do so, he sells a lot of his dad's merchandise, who he used to trade cloth and material. So uh, Francis sold or gave a lot of that away in order to, to rebuild a, a, a dilapidated physical church there. But then he hears the, the, the word of the, the Lord from the Gospel of Matthew. Take no gold or silver or copper in your wallet, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics or sandals or a staff. Okay, so it's from the Gospel of Matthew. It's a divine word. St. Francis hears this and says, okay, well, if that's what I'm supposed to do, if that's what the Lord says, that's what I'm going to do. That's simple. He says, have nothing, so therefore I'll have, I'll have nothing. Now, the following, I strongly recommend you never do. But in the public square, he decides to show that he requires nothing. Not even clothes. Okay, don't do that. Moving on. Um, so, so, so he renounces everything, his father's inheritance, uh, wealth, and all that kind of superficiality that he, he had lived before. And goes out and lives a radical poverty. And they became what they call one of the mendicant orders, mendicant from... The, the, the Latin word to, to beg. So they, they begged, begged for food. That, and part of the, if you became a Franciscan, part of your responsibility or work would have been to go around to neighbors or farmers and, and beg. You know, you had, they had special buckets or baskets that they'd, they'd go to neighbors. Uh, any chance of a couple of eggs or, do you know, I mean, it's humiliating, like, humiliating. Now, the Lord provided. We won't get lost in it. Okay, point being the power of Scripture. The power of Scripture. So St. Francis lived this, lived this, 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 this command and saw the realization of the promise. Take with you no gold, no silver, no, nor copper in your wallet, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor a staff. I will be your God. You will be my people. I am your father. I will provide. And he does. You are my refuge, O oh Lord. When we, when we live this and believe it I, think it, I think scripture can take on a whole new meaning, because especially in the last couple of days, we've been reading a lot from John 14, 15. And John 15 talks an awful lot about love. And it can, you can begin to, it could happen that we might say, oh God, yeah, here, here we go, another gospel about love, love here, love there, you love me, I love you, you're loving me, my loving you. And, I, and it can begin to sound a bit predictable. But these are, these are life, life-giving words. And if we can commit some of them to memory and li more importantly, live by them, live by them and, and delve into the, the reality and the beauty of what they are, of what they give, then I think we'll discover a whole new love for sacred scripture. 
You are my hiding place, O Lord. You save me from distress. You surround me with cries of deliverance. So we ask the Lord today to renew our love for his word, renew our love for sacred scripture, that when we have the privilege of listening to it, that it might nourish our soul, deepen our faith, and guide our steps towards heaven. Amen.